Now, we are going to be looking at our product roadmap for part of our presentation today. So in order to properly set our expectations there, we need to review Salesforce's forward-looking statement slide. Now, for anybody who's unfamiliar, this slide urges Salesforce customers to make any purchasing decisions based only on currently available functionality at the time of purchase. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Karthik Shankar. I'm a director of product management here at Service Clouds. Uh, today, we'll be talking about assets and uh, work orders. Let's dive right into hierarchical assets and work orders. Assets have been the, the object asset has been in the product for quite some time now. And uh, over the last year, we've been very aggressive in um, making some of the enhancements that you've been enjoying. And thanks again for all the uh, inputs in Idea Exchange. We look at them and bring them into the product. Now, for Spring 16, we've uh, added the ability to uh, nest multiple assets uh, and form a hierarchy which, uh, which you could use to model your bill of materials, for instance. Uh, I mean, the, the whole idea is uh, we will enable you to now track service requests on an asset down to the very detailed component level within an asset. Like, if, for example, let's take a not regular household refrigerator. It has so many uh, serviceable parts. And in the past, you would have been able to uh, model these as like the refrigerator, the compressor, maybe the water filter as individual assets and no associations between them. But with Spring 16, you will be able to kind of pull things together all under a, an hierarchy. So a refrigerator has a compressor, has a water filter, has a thermostat and so on and so forth. Diving a little deeper into, into the uh, object itself, uh, there are two key fields that one should be aware of. Uh, the first is the root asset, and then uh, the second is the parent asset. Now, the parent-child relationship needs no explanation. It's pretty straightforward. But I'd like to uh, spend some time talking about the root asset. Now, this is a special, um, special asset, which is uh, system-owned, meaning the platform owns it, it sets it, and maintains it for you. However, you can access this information either on screen or via APIs. Now, what root essentially means is it, it is it is your big asset, in this case, the refrigerator, and all of the other component assets are now part of this uh, tree hierarchy. So to, to the left, you can see that the refrigerator is the root, you have the water filter, you have the compressor, which in turn, even though it's a child of the refrigerator, it also has uh, the relay and the overload protector as children within the compressor. So this way you can, I mean, this is a very trivial, simple example, but uh, you can think about all the different uh, complex scenarios that n it is now possible for you to model within uh, the platform. Uh, one thing to note here is that this hierarchy can go 50 levels deep and can and one root can have up to 2,000 assets under it. So we are hoping that that should be sufficient to model most of the uh, uh, products out there. However, the reason we are doing this is, is uh, a, a, and this is just the beginning of a lot of things that we want to do. Uh, we essentially want to be able to pull in everything, uh, information about almost everything that's there within the platform, within your account and organization. For instance, starting all the way from the price book, which has the details of your assets, but they're as products with a price. And when somebody uh, creates the opportunity, they're now able to bring in all of those products as line items into the opportunity, uh, which then transfers into the code and then into the order. Now, once that is all set up, we want to get to a state where all of the line items in the order now transform into assets for that account automatically. And uh, actually, we talk a little bit about this later, but uh, one of the use cases here is, uh, going back to the refrigerator example, uh, let's say you place the order for it, the first thing you want uh, is want it delivered and installed. So uh, we can automatically now generate a work order for delivery and installation. Related, once since you have all this information, you're also able to generate the service contracts and associate it with the order and the assets. Uh, and we'll, we'll actually talk about uh, how service contracts can lead to work orders. And actually, I'd like to segue into work orders now and come back and talk about these use cases a little more in detail. 
Now, work orders are brand new in the platform today, in Spring 16. Uh, these are standard objects that will help you track services that you perform, either on the asset or otherwise. Right? Uh, these are foundational, just like case objects, and you can see, as you can see on the right side, uh, you, you've got your triggers, your page layouts, you've got your resource types, and it's as it is uh, this very similar to any other foundational object in the platform today. What it also means is it also has pre-built uh, integrations with uh, all the other objects. So again, you can link it with, it's already linked to accounts and uh, contacts, and of course cases and assets and, and so many other things that are available to you out of the box. Uh, one thing I feel also want to mention is we want to also model this in real, like it does in real life scenarios, right? So every work order can have a number of work order line items. And I will walk you through this in a demo and show you how all these fit together. Uh, one thing that uh, I want to call out here is this is now available with Spring 16, but you will have to go in and enable this for your account for it to start working. Now, so how would you use this combination of hierarchical assets and uh, work orders and work orders in particular? Uh, previously, I touched upon a case where you had the asset, you had it uh, uh, ordered, and then you had a work order created for delivery and installation. Uh, another use case that uh, this could potentially help solve is a break-fix model. Okay, going back to the same refrigerator example, uh, so it stops working, so it's broken. So you, I call the uh, customer service uh, agent and they create a case and as they are looking at the case, and we'll see this in the demo, they're able to see that I have this asset, which is the refrigerator. They're able to very quickly create a work order and assign it for a technician to go take a look at. Uh, another thing that we want to also address is the idea behind of uh, planned or preventative maintenance. Uh, going back to the uh, service contract that was generated or linked to the order, uh, now we know that this account has this particular asset, and because of uh, everything else that's available, you also know that you need to be able to schedule maintenance visits uh, on a periodic basis. Uh, and you, you are able to do that automatically in the sense that, let's say, it's the same refrigerator needs the water filter changed every six months. Uh, so not, not like today, but, but closer to the event, maybe a day or two, or as, as is required in the business process, you could set it up so that a work order is generated like the day before, and then uh, the technician can now go and uh, fix the issue preemptively. Now, actually, let me pause there and jump to the demo and show you all of these uh, features. So I'm on the uh, account screen now, and let me pull up the uh, account here, Acme. And, and going back to the uh, hierarchical asset uh, examples, or the uh, uh, example, uh, within the account, you're able to see all the assets that are available. And this is the refrigerator. Let me click on that. I like to point to these two new fields that enable hierarchy uh, possible, that, that enable hierarchy. One is the root asset. Like I said before, it is set by the system, so it's locked. And, uh, you don't have to set it. It's automatically done as you build your hierarchy. And the other is the parent. So obviously, this is the refrigerator, so this is the root. Uh, but let's look at some of the <coughs> other assets that are part of this account, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Go to this list. Let me show you an asset called the start relay. So this is a component within the uh, compressor and it has a kit. So for instance, this, though a part of the refrigerator, you can see that this is the, the root here is the refrigerator. But the parent is, is a kit, which has a combination of relay and overload uh, protections. So when you click on this, you're able to see the hierarchy and stuff like that. So and all of these are bundled together and are now available, will be available in Spring 16. 
Uh, one of the things that you see on screen is the hierarchy, a visual representation of the hierarchy. This is, uh, this is a custom thing that we're building. In the future, we, we will have an out-of-the-box hierarchy uh, UI widget that will help, help you visualize all of this um, better than what you're seeing today. So now that we've uh, talked about the uh, hierarchy within assets, let's look at uh, how work orders come into the picture here. So going back to the break, break, break fix uh, use case, so the customer calls and uh, complains about the refrigerator not working. So they, all the agent does is looks up the customer, looks up the uh, uh, asset in this case, and they can very easily go in and create a new case. And notice how most of uh, all of these fields are pre-filled because it's all linked. And let's say this is a case because the customer called in, it's a phone, and I'm gonna say the refrigerator stopped working. And save it. Now notice a few things here. Uh, once I've saved it, uh, I'm now able to go in and create a work order. Now, a well, few things to notice here, and I think I skipped that. Uh, when you enable work orders within your account, you can also play around with your uh, page layouts and the quick actions uh, bar so that uh, I would encourage everybody to bring those into your layouts when, because you need to see work orders. Also switch here and show you what it looks like in the quick uh, quick action bar. Uh, so let's now create a work order. Uh, it's very simple, and uh, all you say, uh, almost every all the information that you need is now pulled into the work order from the case and the asset. Uh, this is another custom thing that we built called Explored uh, Complex Assets. I mean, just to show you the power of uh, the model. And when we create this. You can see that the work order is already created, and when we drill deeper into the work order, you see all the work order line items created for this particular case. Again, remember, this is a customer calling uh, with, with an issue that the refrigerator has stopped working, and you need somebody to go and have it checked out, check out every component in the refrigerator just to make sure and identify the issue. So this is a very, very easy way for you to generate the work order and generate multiple work order line items so you can look at uh, keeping track of every asset within the main root asset. So that's work orders in short. And again, all of these are uh, interrelated. So when you go back to the asset, for instance, uh, you will be able to see a list of work, order, work orders and work performed on the asset, so this helps with uh, keeping track of service contracts, warranties, and other entitlements. Uh, and again, when you look at the account, you're gonna see all of this information anyway. Uh, and uh, that, that's uh, the end of the demo right now, and I want to reiterate that this is just the beginning of a lot of different things, a lot of powerful things that we wanna do within the product. Uh, and we will expand this to provide a lot more powerful capabilities, out of the box capabilities, so customers can benefit from this. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, my personally, I mean, my interest is already peaked. Seeing what, you're, what you've shown us, and just knowing how well that's going to play with our other automation tools like workflow rules and the process builder. So, I mean, I'm very excited to see what customers are saying about how they're planning on using assets and work orders. But that's enough for me. Let's actually hear what the customers are saying. Well, Sam, I, you see? I have a great question from Paul. Uh, he's asking if you're using cu a custom object that you've built from work orders, is now the time to start planning on migrating to this new standard object? And what would you recommend? Yes, our, our recommendation is to um, uh, migrate to the standard objects that are available out of the box. And so you can leverage a lot more of these capabilities that we're building, just, not just now, also in the future. Now, what edition do you need to have to use work orders? Because I'm not sure it's available in professional edition, right? I think you have to have enterprise and up? Or? Correct, correct. Okay. And good, good point. Thanks, you brought it up. 
Uh, so within Service Cloud, you need to be in enterprise and above in order to access these two uh, objects, or at least work order object. The advantage I see is that all of these things like process builder and master child relationships that you have that allow workflows or process builder or flows to work, it just becomes easier because now it's, it's a standard object that has those built-in relationships in that data model. Mm -hmm.